Ladies and gentlemen, you have one minute. One minute to come to the main stage where two extraordinary illustrators, animators, and authors will be taking us through this fantastic event called Doodle Media, how to take a line for a walk and tell a story. Children, bring your parents to the main stage at the Abu Dhabi International Book Fair. Parents, bring your children to the main stage. This is a family event, fun for everybody. And we'd love to see you here. We look forward to seeing you at the main stage in between one minute and two minutes for Doodle Mania, how to create a cartoon character, how to tell a story through pictures, starring Curtis Joblin and Sarah McIntyre, who have drawn themselves all the way from London to the United Arab Emirates just for you. One minute, ladies and gentlemen, one minute. So, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to this. It's a gentle start. A gentle start on a Saturday for the 29th Abu Dhabi International Book Fair. It's very nice to see you here. Have you had breakfast? Yes? yes. Have you had juice? Have you had some fruit? <laughs> yes? So, yeah, okay, good, good. Should we take a deep breath in? Have a deep breath in. So we know you're alive and awake. And then a really big breath out. Cyrus, you're doing very well. But we're not going to do a huge welcome, obviously, because there are very few of us. But would you please welcome all the way from, in the case of Sarah Jobling, from Seattle. Sarah and the, Jobling. <laughs> we, we, Sarah, we got Jobling? married. Curtis McIntyre, Sarah Jobling. <laughs> We've just gotten married. We're They're sorry, married, Emma. not. The names are now interchangeable. <laughs> My and, wife's right there. And Curtis's <laughs> wife is right there. So we'll start with a little bit of humour. 
I shall shortly be getting off stage. I'm so sorry. Sarah McIntyre, all the way from Seattle in the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. She's come a long way. Give it up for Sarah McIntyre! And to my right, Mr. Jobling, who is married to Mrs. Jobling, <laughs> whose name is Emma, not Sarah. Curtis is, is, is famous for all sorts of things, not least Bob the Builder. He's an illustrator, an animator, an author, and an all-round good egg. So, Cyrus, will you do this for me at the front? Will you do a big clap for Curtis Jobling? Yay! <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll sit down for now because I think <laughs> this is going to be a, a two-handed affair. We've never worked together before. After this, we may never work together again. <laughs> um, so I'm going to let Sarah take the reins for the first part to talk about her work, what she does, give you an introduction, and then I'll waffle on a bit about mine as well. Sarah, please. Well, I'll keep it very brief, but just in case you don't know who I am, I make picture books. Yeah, I love drawing. And there's a new one called Grumpy Corn that has literally come out only in Abu Dhabi. It's not even published yet, so... Magrudis actually have it, which is amazing. Um, I also do comics. Anybody like comics? Raise your hand if you like comics. Does anyone like to make comics? Who likes to make comics? Yes. Awesome. And I also do longer books that have about 200 pages, lots of pictures, with my friend Philip Reeve. Um, so I'll hand over to you. That was quick, wasn't it? I thought <laughs> we were five minutes. I was just nah. settling in. Um, uh, my name's Curtis. I'm an author and an illustrator, uh, much like Sarah. Um, I also work in animation. Um, so as an illustrator, I design kids' TV shows like Bob the Builder. Have you heard of Bob the Builder? Yeah? I know there is a new version on TV at the moment. I'm very proud to say I have nothing to do with that monstrosity. The original Bob, though, I'm all over that like jam on a scone. I'm the designer of that show. And that's the first version of Bob that I ever did. As an illustrator and a designer, I have to make changes along the way. The first version of Bob, lovely as he was, it's not a million miles away from the character that appeared on TV, but I did make some changes. His mustache. The feet were too small. It was a model animated TV show, okay? It was puppets on the stage. So we had to give him big fat feet, otherwise he fell over, okay? The hands were too small. He couldn't hold his tools, so we gave him big fat mitts. The mustache, the mo had to go. Oh. I thought I was being clever giving him a moustache, okay? Um, because if you think of Wallace and Gromit, when he speaks, Wallace, his mouth goes all over the place, but that's not gonna help us. It takes too much time to do. If you give him a moustache, when he speaks, all you do is waggle the moustache. It was a cheat, it was a shortcut. I was being clever. Too clever for my own good, because the boss of the BBC pointed out that preschool boys and girls apparently are scared of facial hair. The BBC did research into this, that's where the license fee goes. I don't know what that research involves. I like to imagine the chief executive of the BBC, a lovely old lady, hiding in some bushes outside a nursery, wearing a fake beard. And when the kids <laughs> walk past at home time, she leaps out of the bushes and shouts, Boo! Which would scare me as well. Bob had a shave, moustache went, and last of all, the bald head. We had to lose that as well, give him a nice big fat lustrous wig. And that's how Bob came into being. The other characters I'm known for are Frankenstein's cat, which originally was a picture book. And there's a long history of picture books being turned into TV shows and cartoons as well. Often the two things go hand in hand. So for me, it was a joy to make a picture book, which eventually got turned into an animated series. The other character I'm known for, if any of you boys and girls uh, watch the CBeebies programs on the BBC that are shown worldwide, you may have met that character. His name is Ra Ra the Noisy Lion. Aww. I am Ra Ra's daddy. Okay? I'm the designer of Ra Ra. I'm the creator of Ra Ra. And I write a few of the episodes of Ra Ra. And there he is as well. He's not very big at all, is he? All hairy and smiley. Yes, there's Ra Ra as well. Okay, uh, so that's a little bit of what I do as well. And hopefully in this session today, uh, Sarah and I will get to collaborate because that's, that's what being an illustrator in picture books is all about, is collaboration. Okay, we work with authors, sometimes we write our own books, and sometimes we have other illustrators working on our books as well. Hmm. Sarah, I'll See. give you the clicker for that. Okay. First. Oh, you've got oh, some so picture there, books. There we go, yeah. yeah. And I also obviously do picture books. Old MacDonald Had a Zoo is probably one of my most recent books. We all know the story of Old MacDonald, he, but he buys, a far, he buys a zoo with uh, lottery winnings. It's a dangerous zoo full of monstrous animals. Uh, and the next book on there is uh, The Sheep Won't Sleep, which is a counting book, okay? Because usually there's a bit of a message hidden behind all the fun in these stories as well. I think that's it with my slides. Yeah, we go. Oh, yeah, right. I've back got to, Grumpy Corn. Back to Grumpy Corn. I just thought I'd, I'd just show you the beginning of Grumpy Corn because it kind of talks about what we're going to talk about, which is making stories, giving ideas. And it starts with this serene situation. You can see Grumpy Corn rowing out to his riding cottage and hooking up his boat. 
and he's so excited. Unicorn was sitting in his special writing house. I am going to write the most fabulous story in the world, he thought. This made him feel very pleased with himself. He already liked being a writer. But Unicorn didn't know where to begin his story. Hmm. I need my special fluffy pen, he said. And he went and got his special fluffy pen. But he didn't know what to write. Has this ever happened to any of you? Yeah. Uh, I need a cup of my special moonberry tea, he said. Then I will be able to write my story. He went and made himself a cup of his special moonberry tea. And Unicorn sat at his desk, wondering what to write in his special fancy notebook. <sighs> he sighed. I wish an idea would come knocking at my door. Dun, dun, dun. And that is where we talk, where do ideas come knocking at your door? So, what should we say? Um, well, do, do we do yeah. the consequences first or the comic strip? Do yeah, I think strip? maybe we could talk about characters. Yeah. One of the things, like you saw that was a, a unicorn character, and I had to invent that and figure out what unicorn was going to look like. And Bob the Builder, you had to figure out what he's going to look like with no mustache and <laughs> all that. <laughs> So, I think if the boys and girls maybe have some input on what kind of character they would like to see Sarah and I try to collaborate as mm. well. Yeah, um, we should come up with, with some characters. Yeah. So maybe a, a, like a, a, sort of a heroic character or a villainous character or something like that? Yeah. Or, so boys and girls, do you have any ideas of what kind of characters you'd like to see us try and create today? That we can maybe think of a little story to go with? We could start with what kind of... If you had an idea for a character, if you were making your favourite character, what, should we start with an animal? Should yeah, we, start we, with the top of, are we starting with feet yeah. or head? Yeah, what should we do? start with an animal. Should we do an animal? What do, an animal head, maybe. What, should well, we do the consequences thing? Yeah, let's do the I'll consequences. I'll tell you what, here's what we'll do. Okay. We're going to play a game where between us, we're going to create a couple of characters. Um, but what we need first of all, then, is an animal head. Mm. And then we'll take it in turns, we'll swap sides, and then we'll draw the animal's body. Okay. Uh, but it'll be <laughs> a different animal. And then we'll turn over, shape sides, and we'll do different animal's legs. And we'll see what we come up with. And that's could, a way of creating a kooky It could look character. very silly. Let's see what ideas we can draw for. Look. So, Cyrus, because you're my favorite person here today, what's your favorite animal? Too shy. What's your favorite animal? Any kind, any, animal, or just pick an animal. Do you have a favorite animal? Okay, so I'll come back to you guys. Later. Hopefully. Hello, how do you do? <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your name? Saad. Saad. Do you have a favorite animal? What is it? Monkey. A monkey. Monkey. Should we start with a monkey? Okay. Should we both Should do we monkey? Do Can we work with a yeah, monkey? Yeah, that way, yeah. Okay. 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 Saad. So we're both going to draw a monkey, and we'll leave the neck, and then we'll cover it up, and we'll see where we get to. So for a monkey... I always find when I'm designing animals or characters, Google is always your friend, because it's always good to have some sort of pictorial reference when you're creating that character as well. Okay? Here we go. This actually is kind of easy for me because we have a lot of monkeys in a book I did called Oliver and the Sea Wigs. So I'm of actually course. used to drawing monkeys. We like monkeys. I did a picture book as well called Cheeky Monkey. Did you? Oh, what was is, it about? Uh, it's about a monkey that runs through the jungle basically uh, blowing raspberries wherever he goes as well. Awesome. Let's see. Okay. What we can do then is, hopefully, via the magic of sticky back plastic, we will be able to cover what we have done and save ourselves a little bit of room. Okay. Curtis has nearly finished his monkey head, Sarah. How are you getting on? Yep, getting good. Okay, there we go. Brilliant. Cool. So what do we need next? Oh, we need a body of an animal, don't we, Sarah? So an animal body. Cyrus, do you guys have an... No, should I come to you? No, let's Different go to some... animal. Yeah, I found some lovely children here. <laughs> Hello, young lady. What's your name? Isabel. <laughs> and are you her sister? Yes. <laughs> What's your name? Jenny. Jenny. What body of an animal would you like to see? <laughs> a snake. <laughs> oh, that was... <laughs> Thank you, Isabel. Do you like going to school? I love going to school. 
Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> Isabel's idea is the body of a snake, please, Sarah and Curtis. Can it be a snake with an elephant in it? It can be, <laughs> it can be any sort of snake you imagine. <laughs> it might have swallowed something. That's a good idea, isn't it, actually? Yeah. yeah, okay. You've got to guess what they swallowed. There we go. That's a good idea. The great thing about drawing is it requires focused concentration. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it wrong all these years, clearly. <laughs> and Sarah, can I ask a question? If you don't have moonberry tea, are you allowed to have coffee? If you're looking for inspiration while you're sitting at your drawing table waiting for... Yeah, well, my, my imagination uh, is sponsored by Nespresso. Okay, good. So, if that helps. <laughs> oh, yeah, mine's sponsored by, what was it? The Good Foods, my, my oh, flip Oh, this chart. stand, yeah, of say. course. We it's have to say, because our flip chart, the Good Food restaurant has donated this, so we're yeah, very grateful to them. Quality food, sponsored by Guest of Honor India. We have them to thank for this easel. Um, so, a little round of applause for them as well, please. That's that marvelous. <laughs> thank you, Quality Food, sponsored by India, <laughs> without right. whom we would not be able to put this show on. Kind of make us a bit Elmer. Uh, they're in section nine. And they do have a selection <laughs> of Indian foods. Please go to section nine and sample uh, the selection of Indian foods at Quality Foods of India who have kindly sponsored this event through the use of their easel. Okay. How are we doing? Nearly there. It's looking good. That's quite an interpretation of a snake, Sarah, I have <laughs> to say. E it's eaten something. It's, it's a body. snake that has eaten yeah. a checkerboard elephant. Elmer. It's a tribute to Dave McKee. Okay. Yeah. Marvellous. Okay, How are you getting on there, there, Curtis? Just about done. If I can just unstick. You're looking good. This, we're nearly there. Come on. There we go. Okay. Just in your heads, imagine we're doing this event to 500 attentive children. <laughs> Now we All of whom are pitching ideas in. So, so I, th I think, are we, are we both done with the bodies? Okay. We need legs for our animal now, don't we? So legs. So, so I, have some, I have some lovely lady children here. Ooh. What sort of animal legs would you like to see on our cartoon character, madam? Panda. A panda's legs. A panda? Can we do a panda's legs? I'm thinking sure black and white, furry. Black and white, we can do that. You can yes, do black definitely. and white. That's a good start. Well yeah. done. Thank you. Well, I might need a bit of tape. How would so you describe a panda's legs? Okay, right. Panda. Panda's, panda, panda panda's legs. legs. Can you work what with that? Or what do you want other ideas? Like? Okay. Uh, has, has my panda had a gastric band fitted? Yeah. yeah. Your panda has <laughs> very... That waist is pretty narrow. Yes, okay, I'll work with that. I'll try and work with that. Your panda <laughs> has very short legs, and I assume we have to leave room for feet. Oh, we, are we drawing feet or are we drawing... No, I think, yeah, yeah, let's do feet. that. Otherwise, okay. they're just okay. like black leggings. So if we do, if we do their feet, that's fine. Okay. okay. So furry legs. They, they could be wearing shoes, though. Yeah, I think. A bit of glamour on a panda. It's quite interesting. It really is fascinating. I've always loved doing this, um, events like this, where you're seeing imagination in action. The manifestation of an image in someone's brain being made physical. <laughs> well, if you think about it, there's something rather magnificent about it. So blood is rushing through Curtis's brain now as he panically tries to think out what a panda's legs look like. And even black or white. I can't black think or white, you can't go wrong. Both. I can't remember. My Both, experience. one or the other. And then the blood's rushing from his brain, down his shoulder, through his arm, comes out into the pen where it magically turns into ink and then it hits the paper. So it's sort of like... That's his tail, by the way, just to be clear. That is his tail, okay? You might want to put a... It's wagging. ...a bigger no, okay. tail on it. Yeah. That's his banana peel. Sarah, how are you getting on? Very well. Your panda's wearing platforms? Yes. It's a stylish panda. Okie dokie. It's a David Bowie platform. Oh, yes. A David Bowie panda from the 1970s. The decade that style forgot. <laughs> 
Hmm. Uh, exactly. Depend is Rory. No, they don't. What Rory do we need now? I think. Well, that's it. Now we've created okay. two strange. Siblings, I suppose they are. They're related so in some way. The do great we need, unveiling. I do think we, we can do, we do, do accessories? Do yours first. Let's do yours first. Okay. okay. Well, it's ours, to be honest. I can't claim all responsibility oh. for this. So we'll just... That's uh, good. Sorry. Oh, my. What was wow. going on? <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's lovely. Clearly, it's his tail. There we go. Yeah. Oh. So there's our uh, monkey, uh, monkey ella pando. Uh, what? Yeah, we'll yeah. go with that. Okay. Monkey ella snake pando. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite cool. And then over. Okay, and the great unveiling. Let's see what we got. We have got. Da -da 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 -da. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that's that's impressive. Okay. I think that should have to appear in a book at some point. That's closer to the carriage, I think, that we can work with in a, in a story. Um, so that's how you can, it, with your <laughs> friends in school, you can create characters this way. It's really simple. When I was little, with my brothers and sisters, we used to create loads of uh, strange, wacky characters this way as well. That was when I first started to draw. Um, it was by my mum and dad putting picture books in our hands or, or sketchbooks uh, and just doodling with things as well. And you could just fold the paper over each yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like a, yeah, consequences. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Perfect. good. Curtis, do we know what we're doing next or do you want to have a quick idea? Um, I think we're... Going to have a go at doing a comic strip. Yeah, so let's do that. that. Cool. I think we could we could probably even use some of these character bits that we've just drawn. Elements, elements of, of. Yeah. You don't have to draw elephants the elephants of. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to draw the elephant every single time if you don't want. But you, we have to think. Now we've got characters. We, they need names. Who's, who would like to give this one a name? What's what do you think mine should be named? We have a children's writer and illustrator. Is you an, a, an author or illustrator? Here, second. Author. So you get the Ooh, honor of coming up with a name yeah. for Sarah slash Curtis's weird monkey snake panda character? Um, yes, maybe it can be a funny a name or a, a normal name, name or anything. How about a nice Emirati name? Oh, she's uh, got a name too. Might be in your head already. Sibal. Sibal. How would we spell Sibal? Sibal. Monkey, yeah. Oh, so S-I-B-A? Let's say B A L. Okay. So Sibal. And maybe you can come up with the last name. So Sibal, what's the last name? Lily Sibal. I think that's quite a star name. Okay, this is Lily Sibal. So do you have a local Emirati name for elephant or snake? That sounds like quite a girl. I might give it little eyelashes. Sibala, then. An A on the end because she's a girl. Sibala. Okay. That's a very glamorous name. I think that could be, yeah. That's the Hollywood name. Like so what's that? yours going to be? I think, well, I'm not quite sure. He, uh, some intervention needed here. He needs to go to hospital, definitely, for many reasons. <laughs> the snake with um, the random head. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there, what would the um, an, uh, Emirati, how would you describe somebody who is a glutton? Somebody who eats a lot? Somebody who is greedy? Or, or we can go, yeah. we can go for a random name here. If you will. Or a random name, or if random, that works as like well. you were so good earlier on, would you like to give, what name would you like to give <laughs> our monkey, <laughs> snake, elephant, panda person? Would you like to give him a name? If he was your pet, and he, you were given to him by your wonderful father here, what name would you give him? Um, what would you call him? Or her? I think he's a he is a Make him a boy, shall we? If yeah. that's what okay. Okay. Alternatively, what's the name of your best friend? Monkey, elephant, snake. S smick? I quite like smick. Monkey, elephant, snake. Okay. Well, we've... Mel, Mel Snake. Mel, 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 Mel the snake. snake. Mel the Mel Snake. The snake. <laughs> or we could just rearrange it and call it Snellmo. 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 Snake Let's go with that. Yeah. Snake, elephant, monkey. How about yeah. Snellmo? Sorry to help a little bit there. Okay, Mel so now we've got characters, but we need to give them something to do. Because if your story is you have a character, they're happy, that's the end, that's a boring story. So we have to give them a problem or something they want or a disaster happening at the beginning of a story. So what sort of thing, what do you think? Yeah, if we think about them, the, the, the thing with these characters is there's one thing that even though they both swallowed ridiculous animals as well, we've got an elephant here and uh, a crocodile over there, the problem for them is that they haven't got any arms. You're right, they're armless. Neither of them have arms. So what, maybe that's the challenge that they that have. That could be, yeah. So where would they go looking for something that could work as arms? Maybe they're going looking for some arms. They could actually go to the arm shop. To the arm shop, yeah. yeah you know, different you animal arms shop. to choose from. Yeah, prosthetics, you know, all sorts of cool things you Mechanical can get. Mechanical arms. Yeah. Yeah. 
Should we, should we go? Yeah, so should we have them looking for arms? Okay. Okay. So let's see, where should we set it? Should we set it in Abu Dhabi or in the shop or? So Snellmo and Lily Sabala have no off? arms. I'll start off. Shall I design the shop that they're visiting? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe in the zoo. We've got an, an arms arm shop, shop in, in the, the zoo. zoo. So we're heading to the zoo. Okay, so if we go with our... Um, so within the zoo, we're going to have... Uh, Uh, what would it be called? Ooh, um, arms, for, arms for you. Arms fair. <laughs> no, arms fair. <laughs> uh, Stop that now. Uh, what are we on. looking at for uh, the spare parts? Spare parts, yeah. Spare parts. You should be up here. Do you want me to draw, I, you, I can absolutely. draw you a little flag if you want with the name. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Spare. Okay. So if we have uh, a doorway on the way in, which we can open up to reveal what's in our store. And <laughs> who we got going in on, on the way in? We've got... We're in there. Um, what kind of things could we have hanging down within? Oh, maybe a few limbs. <laughs> a few <laughs> limbs. Yeah. It's, maybe it's owned by Dr. Moreau. Maybe he's the, he's the keeper of the shop. So Dr. Moreau's spare parts. Uh, <laughs> Ask your parents, okay? Okay, exactly, yeah. Um, so maybe we've got uh, some, uh, uh, what would we have? Uh, Let's have an ear, a mouth, a hand. There's a little monkey arm hanging down here. Aww. Maybe there's uh, spare parts, because it's anything, isn't it? Maybe it there's could be anything. An, an yeah. elephant's trunk. Hanging out. What other animal parts can we have in here? Anything else that we can have? A tusk. Who can think of an Rhinoceros animal Rhinoceros tusk. What's a bit that might, an animal might need if it's missing? Oh, the, the, um, the, the, the tongue, tongue from a snake. A tongue from a snake? Forked yeah. tongue for a snake. Can anyone think of another okay. animal part? Maybe in the back. A snout of a pig? Should we do that? Yeah. Pig snout? Oh, uh, what else? Who can think of another animal part that might be who, missing? Who can think of an animal part that they can Could draw in the spare part shop teeth, for animal bits? Ears. How about a tiger's teeth? Should we do a tiger's teeth? Tiger's teeth? Could okay. you do a ti tiger, tiger's a, teeth? A, a saber tooth there tiger's teeth. There might be a whole tooth. rack of teeth you could choose from. Oh, yeah, from. yeah. So we do like, that. Could be like okay. the opticians. Animal dentures. <laughs> that could be really fun. You could actually have an a jar of eyes. A jar of eyes, okay. Yeah. We could have those in the corner here as well. You could have completely blobby characters go into the zoo shop, and they all, they all look the same in the beginning, and they all get to choose what they look like. This could be amazing. Wow. I'd like to see this. This would be a good animation. <laughs> okay, so we've got the jar there. What else? So we've got the entrance to the, the, the shop here. How, oh, about yeah. a, how about a whale's fin? A whale's fin? A whale's, or a, a whale's a donkey, tail or a shark's or a, or a donkey, fin. Or, yeah. yeah, a shark's tail. There we go. Shark fin, whale tail. Fire at will. And is it on an island or something? Or Should we have it on an island? Yeah, it's yeah. the island of Dr. Moreau. He's hit, hit yeah. hard times. Sort of. Uh, the recession. So if we maybe stick it on a little desert island or something. So maybe he turns up on a boat. Yeah, so yeah. Yep. So we, we get a little... Here's, yeah, there we go. Okay. So here's on the island. And we've got a boat turning up. And a little jetty, some little steps down to it. Okay. Oh, yeah. This looks really cool. <laughs> okay. Little boat. Yep. Okay. So now we've got our little, at the beginning, we've got the setup, we've got the world where our character is heading to. Should we put one of the, one of the characters in the boat? Yeah, should we put, or are they both going there? Or, are we okay. just, or should we stick? Okay, you got that one, got one. And I'll do the monkey over, the, the uh, what was this, Selmo. Uh, okay. Lily Sibala and Selmo. So what was it? What would it be? It would be Lily and Selmo. Lily and Snellmo. Snellmo. Snake, Snake, Snake and Snake and monkey. Yeah, exactly. Snellmo. Well done. We're looking for. We're looking for arms. Sought yeah. arms. Searching for arms. Okay. And okay. then as you go along, you'd obviously have a little more details to help embellish your drawing uh, and make it come to life. Also. 
and they saw orange. They had none. Okay. Okay. Got the seagulls up there. As Brilliant. Well. Okay. Okay. So we've got the first start, the beginning of the story. Okay. So I guess what's the next thing is they've got to go in and ask for some. So here they are. Let's see what's that look like. Uh, I might come up closer so I can get more references. Here you go. Do you want some help? So I can see what he's drawn. There you go. Okay. Do you want to join us side by side? Yeah, let's go side by side. Oh, and I can just, actually. Hold on, we yep. can pull you up. I can actually see what you've drawn. Bring you into the middle of the stage more. I don't have a very good memory for looking at stuff. I can sort of look at it and then completely forget it in a split second. Okay. So we've got the arch. Okay. There might be a little desk in there. So inside the arch. Ah, there's the doors. And little monkeys coming up the desk. So is this now spare part shop interior day? Where's your desk? Is that over here? Yeah, I'm going to put a desk here and he's going to be okay. going. Maybe their bodies are obscured by something at this point in time. And I wonder what kind of receptionist might be at the desk. Maybe a giant squid? Yeah? There's a giant squid at the desk. Yeah, what's, what's he look like again? He's got a snake body and those kind of furry legs. <laughs> I feel very sorry for them, to be honest. I know, they look really pathetic. Okay, he says... So this is reception. And we've got some bits and bobs hanging down. There's a chicken leg. Bit of a snake tail. Yeah. Uh, a few eyeballs. You could have a whole chandelier of eyeballs. A couple of camel's humps hanging down. Maybe. Oh, yeah, well, maybe go not. for it, go for it. <laughs> Should we go for it? Okay. <laughs> so say, please. Camel humps, obviously. Yeah. Please, ma'am. Do you have arms I could buy. Okay. And now we need a resolution to the story. Or, or I don't know. I think, what do you one, think? One, what do you think? More? They're going to say yes or no. Selection of arms so, and then the choice, yeah. surely. Maybe mm. we, we need to see these guys with different arms on them. Oh, think? yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, try so it. Little panels. We could do little vignettes. Yeah, yeah. should we do on them both of these? If we turn yeah, them both yeah, over. let's do on both of them, yeah. So I'm going to try my character, try on some. What kind of arms would mine try on that would look really bad? What sort of arms do you think they could have that are not monkey arms? What Unicorn sort of arms? arms and legs do animals have? What think would look terrible? An animal Reptile how arms? Just, how, how characters have no arms? They've gone to the shop to buy arms. What's the worst non-monkey arm you can think arms. of? A monkey's arm. What's that? An orangutan arm. <laughs> What's that? A shark's fin. Insect arms. Insect it's arms. I was thinking of ants, isn't it? Spiders. We have an elephant's leg as one contribution. Elephant arms. Okay, oh, so, so an elephant? elephant's front leg. Yep, yep, yep. okay. Or, or, in, or flies' wings. Butterfly's well, wings. Possibly. A butterfly okay. wings. So, oh, butterfly wings are good as well. We have a, the arms of the long arms of a gibbon with a hand at the end. Do you want more suggestions? I'm going to go with butterfly wings if that's okay. Okay. So I've got, what was it, uh, ele one elephant arm. We've had, the, we've had a dragon wing um, entry. Choose as you see fit. And then the other one is, what was the other one? It was an insect arm, I think. Say again, sorry. The arms of a chair, we got a oh, bit left oh, field. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, so it's trying on several arms at once. Cyrus is a late entry. Oh, we've got ideas now. Can you say Tyrannosaurus? Do you want me to say it for you? A, tyra a little Tyrannosaurus arm. Oh, oh okay. yeah. I like those as well. Like Maybe give him Tyrannosaurus. We'll try a combination. I'm going to give him Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> He's got quite a lot of arms. You've got them all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> it's a Swiss army monkey. There's yeah. no, in, in, in this store, spare parts, there's no limit to the number of arms you can try on for a fit, surely. <laughs> all of them, all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is, this is looking great. 
<laughs> the, the, the chair arms are the most obscure, I, I think, really. Yeah, okay. Um, Little T-Rex arms there. And then... He's saying, what? <laughs> As yours looking. Oh, that, oh, yeah, a little yeah, flash of colour right. just because it's a butterfly. That's I think the only reason wings why. Too. So it's not very practical, poor fella. Mine's a bit embarrassed. Did you notice Curtis has gone from monochrome into Technicolor? Just for that, just a little hint, Ooh. just to, to make it zing, to make it sparkle, to give it pizzazz. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ooh, now I'm off. So he's not looking very happy, um, Snellmo, because he's a little bit disappointed at this combination. He, these wings won't lift him off the ground, and he can't pick anything up with those tiny little T-Rex uh, arms as well. So that's not working. Lily was appalled. <laughs> Lily, uh, Selma, Snowman disappointed. Was disappointed. Oh, that's worse than appalled. When your parents yeah. are disappointed, it's the worst. Oh, uh, you, you totally trumped me on that. <laughs> so what, can he, what would be the best arms? So do we go for resolution now? Yes, I think so. The resolution frame. Yeah, what's going to happen? How can we solve this? Or it could be a happy ending, it could be a tragic ending. Do what our heroes get the arms they deserve? What happens? Who can decide? Anyone in the back? Can you think of a way to finish this story? Do they keep their arms? Do they get one arm? Do they, do they give up in disgust and decide they don't need arms? Oh, that's a... I think that one of them needs to manage without arms and start Quite using right. legs. Okay. But one of them maybe can have a resolution. Mm. Let's see. That was Isabel, who is six and who has grown up very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think I think Lily would be happy without arms. Really, this is just yeah. a, this is just a mess. So yeah. What are, but what so would what they what would they do? Where would they go? Or is that or is that the message here that they'd be happy, be content with your lot? Pick your lot yeah. or design your, your future or whatever. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a divergent path. Two things have legs. Uh huh. Maybe you can use two legs to do things because she doesn't have arms. Oh, yeah, Lily's totally cool. Like, she can eat noodles. She can use chopsticks so well with her legs. Like, you would not even believe it. A, 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 a late entry as well. Maybe they work together. Teamwork <gasps> saves the day. Yes. So, maybe they grapple one another in such a way where their one's upside down, the other one's above and they combine to provide each other with the, the requisite yes. number of limbs that they need. You know you've got to draw them, this, yeah. Should we put them at a table? After you, Sarah, okay. please. <laughs> yes, okay. please yeah. So here's, here's Lily sitting at the table, totally happy without her legs. Okay. And she's feeding, using her feet with chopsticks to okay. feed some noodles to, and you can draw the character uh, yeah, here if you like. Though. There we go. Who <laughs> in turn? He hasn't really just come from the psychiatric ward, I promise. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not. No, it's not that. Oh, she has a little apron on so she doesn't get spills. He, they're very happy now because they've. Oh, and then we've got a table. We've got the noodle bowl here. Yeah, satin stools. Well done for bringing them out on a Saturday morning so early. <laughs> You're doing well. Mm, we'll see how it goes. Uh, that's good. Oh. Uh, like very well, actually. I have to say, I'm very impressed. You have delightful children. There are no rules when you're telling a story with pictures. You can go literally anywhere. You, the only thing stopping you is your imagination. So... We're all good. And then we have the beginnings. We have the beginnings of a story there. And an ending as well. Um, which we can spend a lot of time working into and building more characters. More situations, different <laughs> glims uh, that fail along the way as well. So I think you can give yourselves a bit of a round of applause there for giving us all those really great give ideas Give yourselves as well. a marvellous round of applause. <laughs> and a huge round of applause to the people who are properly called, despite my earlier introduction, Sarah McIntyre and Curtis Yay. Jobling.
Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you want thank to have you. a chat with Sarah or Curtis, or get them to draw something for you. There are books for sale just on the left-hand side to the left of the stage, and they'll be signing at the table yeah. just so next to the bookstore. Books. Yeah, so we're going to have a chat with them yeah. there. I think we're happy to do some doodles for your children. If, you, yeah. if you're around there as well, we'll do little drawings for them. We're quite happy to do that also. So, yeah, feel so, free, we'll sign, sign our books. Thank you very much indeed, Sarah and Curtis, and thank, thank you, you all, <laughs> mums and dads and children, thank you. for coming thank you. here this morning. Thank you. And thank have you a lovely the day. technicians who've been work, making everything work. So give them a big round of yeah, applause. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, Yay guys. Yeah, for the tech people. Thank you. <laughs>